Good evening, you're watching the Daily News Bulletin. I'm Navya Singh. Let's begin with the headlines today. First, as always, the COVID-19 updates. India added over 55,000 fresh infections of coronavirus and over 800 deaths in the last 24 hours. Now, with these numbers, we've already surpassed the 27 lakh mark in terms of the coronavirus tally. The health ministry today said that there has been a decline in the daily number of COVID cases in the last three days. Talking about recoveries, close to 20 lakh people have already recovered of the deadly virus, pushing the recovery rate to beyond 73% in the country. Shifting focus to Jammu and Kashmir, two Indian Army Javans who suffered bullet injuries during an attack on the security forces in the Baramula district yesterday succumbed to their injuries today. The attack began yesterday when the terrorists opened fire at a check post where a team of the CRPF personnel and the Jammu and Kashmir police were deployed for security. During the attack, three security personnel lost their lives, including two from the CRPF and one cop from the Jammu and Kashmir police. Now, after the attack took place, the security forces initiated a counter-operation to nab and track down all the attackers involved in the attack. In the process, three terrorists were eliminated by the security forces, including one top commander of the LED, which is the Lashkar e Taiba, identified as Sajjad Heder. Now, Pune had its very first zero survey conducted to assess the spread of COVID-19 in the city. The survey found the presence of coronavirus antibodies in over 51% of the residents who were chosen for the study. The presence of COVID-19 antibodies, ladies and gentlemen, reveals that that particular person has already had the virus or has been infected with the virus before. Now, during the survey, it was also found that there was a higher zero positivity prevalence in those people who use shared toilets in comparison to those who use independent toilets. The Pune Divisional Commissioner, however, has said that the survey was not comprehensive as it only included certain specific areas, to be precise, only five areas that were highly infected with the virus. The Commissioner has also said that two more surveys will be conducted using a larger sample size. Expressing disappointment over the conviction of advocate Prashant Bhushan by the Supreme Court in a contempt of court case, over 1,500 lawyers have urged the Supreme Court to take corrective steps and prevent the miscarriage of justice. In a statement, the lawyers have written that a bar silenced under the threat of contempt will undermine the independence and ultimately the strength of the Supreme Court. The lawyers have also urged the Supreme Court to hold an open hearing after the coronavirus pandemic to review the standards of contempt of court. The Supreme Court today rejected a plea seeking transfer of all the donations and contributions made till date to the PM Cares Fund to the NDRF, which is the National Disaster Response Fund. The Supreme Court today clearly mentioned that the PM Cares Fund, which is set up by the central government, is not in violation of the Disaster Management Act 2005. The Supreme Court also said that no funds can be transferred from the PM Cares Fund to the NDRF and also said that the PM Cares Fund has been set up as a public charitable trust. That's all for today. I'll be back with some more important news tomorrow. Thanks for watching.